Today's topic is really uh, special to me because it's about family, and that's near and dear to my heart. Yeah. A lot of people are trying to raise their family. They want to give their kids the best. We all want to do the very best thing for our family. Right, right. But we're trying to keep up many times with the Joneses, do everything the way everybody else does it, and we're really teaching our children that you're just to be a clone of somebody else, and it's okay to sacrifice your freedom, your finances, and your family, family and your destiny to try to keep up with all of these uh, things that m people spend yeah. money on. And there's really a way you can have a lot of nice things for your family, do it a little differently than others are doing it, and you're gonna get a lot better results in the long run than your neighbors are gonna get. So you don't wanna just follow That's what right. everybody else is doing. We're gonna show you some of those ways that you can save on things for your family, and yet your family still have a great life and come out in the long run much further ahead than those that are just doing the debt thing. That's right. We're gonna talk about your car. We just saw your car. Uh, that six series BMW convertible is, you know, is really nice, nice, car. Really really like nice car. But we didn't buy, but we didn't buy it new. We didn't buy it new. Let's let's talk about that. So we have some decisions to make in family life. What am I going to pay for? How am I going to get the things that I need? Well, if you just change your mindset a little bit, like that car. Uh, if you went to a dealership and asked to buy that car, today's sticker price on that car is one hundred thirteen thousand dollars. Now I don't know about I don't know about you, but I don't really like the thought of paying one hundred thirteen thousand dollars for a car right. that's going to rust away right. in a few years to nothing, right? Right. I'm not trying to impress anybody, and neither should you. You know, the car that I have, we bought it secondhand, but it's just as nice as the new one on the lot, and yeah, so I get to was... enjoy the benefit of driving a really well built built machine. I like yeah. the driving that's machine. Right. Okay, I like it, but I'm not paying and. Uh, you know, putting Top my dollar family, for it. Right, That's right. Not putting my family at jeopardy. We got a lot less money. Than so that. let's talk about buying cars because families have to have cars. And we're not saying to have the rusted out, you know, just get by $500 right. car. Right. God wants you to have great things and you need safe things. So let's talk about that car. I just did a chart because you need to know this about buying a car. Let's put that chart up on the screen concerning buying a car. You need to know that the minute you drive your car off the lot, it loses instantly 11%. And you can see here, if Drenda would have paid that $113,000 for that car, the minute it crossed the, the line, went off the lot, purchased, we just lost $12,500 if that was her car, she paid full price for it. You can see on this chart how fast a car depreciates each year on this graph all the way down on four years, that car would be worth $51,000. Wow, less than half of what was paid for in four years, and you're still going to be paying credit, right? The interest Yeah, you're payment. paying interest and all that if you borrow the money. Wow. But the average car is worth 37% of its sticker price in five years. So obviously, we really don't want to do that that way. Now, if you buy a new car and you decide to hold it till the wheels fall off, then you could justify a new car if you keep it for 15 years if you want. <laughs> um, we paid $28,000 for that BMW with less than 60,000 miles on it. It was mint. It was perfect. Yes, and still is. And I like $28,000 better than 113 dollars and Absolutely. I'm driving the same car. Again, it's not about impressing someone with what you paid for it. It's an impressive car. I like the car, but I didn't pay $113,000. 28,000, quite a yeah. bit less than what people are paying for new beaters. That's right, right, <laughs> yeah. And so it's a nice car and you wanted a convertible and that's a nice, that's right. bigger convertible. And, and we, you we like me it. With it. Yeah, it we like the car. It was a birthday gift, it yeah. was great. So that's something to think about. Buy cars that are maybe two to three years old. Look for a good buy, a good, sharp, clean car to get your family vehicle. So we saved on that car $85,000. That's $85,000, not counting interest, we paid cash, not counting interest, that money goes a long way in staying out of debt. And let me say this, Gary, because some people are thinking this, but Gary, there's gonna be some repair bills when you buy a car that's not brand new. What would you sure. say to that? Well, I would say the repair bills are a lot cheaper than a new car. Absolutely. And so I think, I think we've spent maybe $3,000 in repairs over the six or years right. we've had it. And it's certainly, so we're still, uh, we're in still it at $30,000. And it's 10 years old today, right. and we're still not getting rid of it. Why? I because it. it looks like a great car, <laughs> yeah. and it is a great it car, great. so it, it's a great car. Again, it's not about impressing somebody. They change the car styles just enough to make you feel like if I don't buy a new car, someone's going to know my car is not brand new. So what? When you have millions of dollars in the bank, do you care? 
I'd yeah, rather I mean, have I, the we, money, the right. freedom, than have the car that's, <laughs> that's right. brand new. I mean, we go down to the bank, we can go pay cash for a car. Yeah. You know, and if you a, can do a that, brand fine. new car, and that's fine. But, but most people don't have that money. Yeah, I'm and just they saying though. It. I just said I, I have made the choice to right. drive that ten-year-old car. Right. I like the car, and I can go buy a new one with cash, but I don't want to. <laughs> you know, I kind of like having the cash. We have better so, things to do. Better things to do with things. So let's talk about something else that's big. So. The biggest area that a family faces is housing. Yes. How am I going to get a house? We, I remember the feeling, I know you do too, Dorinda, that when we were just came out of debt, um, we were just struggling. I remember driving on the road and thinking, you know, how will I ever be able to buy a house and pay for it? I mean, we are struggling to pay $300 a month in rent. And, uh, oh, it was so it's discouraging before God began to teach us his kingdom and we began to apply the laws of the kingdom. But uh, we want to talk about an unusual thing that God led us to do when we built our house was we, of course, saved cash, paid cash for our land, and we began to look for uh, plans to build a house. And we decided, you helped, we, did, we agreed to general contract our own house, to build yes. our own house. Well, we'd seen all these uh, beautiful homes at the Parade of Homes, and they were way up there money-wise. Yeah, And we money. were living in an 1800s farmhouse and, you know, it was, yes. we were there for our eight plus year, you know, eight and a half years, yeah. I think it was. Yep. And at that point, we had the cash now that we could go pay cash for land, uh, pay, pay that down, get it off. Yep. Pa land's paid for. Now we're going to build a house. And God led us to a book that showed me how reading one book, I could be the general contractor on our home. I general contracted while Gary kept our business going. He was working hard in the business. I was showing up at the uh, job site, 6 a.m., yep. lining up the contractors, worked with uh, a gentleman that had contracted homes, kind of gave me some advice. I read one book, got some advice, went into the different stores, asked some questions. Many things you can do yourself if you just ask a few questions. And for us, the savings on that home was well worth I the it, time yeah. I spent that year helping do the general contract work on the house. It saved us well over $100,000. Not only that, then the house appreciated and came out yeah. a lot better than if so we went when you came, new for So when we started talking about general contracting, we went past that, actually. We actually did some of the work. Sure. So besides general contracting, which is actually you know, getting the contractors, do, yes. we did the electric. I did the electric, and I had never touched a wire in my life up to that point. And I did now not come from a building. Here. Well, I'm just saying that I never, I did not come from a building background. Right. I really didn't know what was involved in building a house until this book. I read this book and went through every segment, right. how you do the foundation, the walls, right. you know. It's not and, that hard. Uh, ask people. <laughs> Obviously, we're not doing most of the work. We're contracting it. But the electric, I decided, I think I can do that. Yes. And so I was surprised. I'll admit it took more time than I thought. It's more labor intensive it's than It's more knowledge. labor intensive. But the yes. bottom line is we did that. We painted the whole house, did tile flooring. We did all the landscaping. Yeah, we did I learned to lay tile. Much it's as we could do. <laughs> but we, we have our house. And, of course, it's paid for. But we saved $120,000 on our house. Yes. That's not small money. We have a car. Right. We saved 85000 We have a house. There's 120000 You get the idea. We're saving some big right. dollars here. And because our house has been paid us. off uh, over all seven years, payments, yes. all that payment, all that money that we would have spent is now going into the kingdom of God, doing other things. Yes. and. And building wealth for your family, the legacy that you truly, right. when you really have the stuff, instead of looking like to the neighbors you have it, but you really don't. Right. Because the rightful owner is the bank, right? That's right. And so the house has been paid for. We've lived in it 15, 16 years yeah, now, yeah. and we haven't tried to go into further debt or upgrade. It's a nice home. does what it needs to do. It's a beautiful home. And God yes. gave it to us because we use some... Some ingenuity, we applied ourselves to... That's an interesting word, ingenuity. Is that Southern? Uh, no. <laughs> it's, it just means that we used our mind, we, used, we listened to the Spirit of God, we let Him lead us. God can lead you in ways to do things that are different than the way everybody else says it. That's now, right. let me just say this. If time is worth more to you than money, then you don't have time to contract your own house. If you have all kinds of money, but you don't have time, then sure, go pay for someone else to do it exactly right. the way you want to do it. But this was getting into our first dream home. We got the dream home. The house was well worth many, many, many times over what we paid to build it. And because right. we paid it, because we did a lot of it cash as we went, and because we general contracted ourselves, 
we saved a ton of money on it. That's right, and, and learned yet a lot. we still got what we wanted. We learned how a house works. Our children were a part of this venture. Now they all know how to build a house, which leads us to what our son Tim did. Well, then our, our kids with the age are just getting married, of course, and they um, need homes. So they learned by being involved with our home what a house is, you know, and what's involved all with the it. Components, so, yeah. for instance, several of them have gone out and bought houses that were either foreclosed or, you know, um, a rehab house, a house that needs some help. And so, for instance, Tim, our oldest son, went out and paid $35,000 for a house that had appraised at the height of the real estate, you know, in like 2008 at 160, 170,000. And he added maybe 10 to $12,000 to, you know, put into the house. And uh, in, in a matter of a few months, then it appraised for, you know, a hundred some thousand. So he has a hundred thousand dollars equity for maybe three or four months of part-time work in this house, and he has it paid for. And that's for a 20-some-year-old starting out in marriage right. to have a house paid for, that's right. uh, pretty good. And he's almost done that with his second house yeah. that he's selling, and he'll have another $75,000 cash yeah. come out of that. And this is a young person who's been very frugal, will not buy hardly anything because he's learning, you know, the foundation of starting his family. Now their first baby is about to be born and they're working to build a foundation because if you get the foundation right, then later you can do things that others cannot do. If you'll do today what others will not do, tomorrow you can do what others That's cannot right. do. So stop keeping up with the Joneses and instead get the Word of God. Let God show you how to add... Uh, a blessing to your life without sorrow. Yep. We come back. This is great topics. It's how our family did it. And we want to help you understand what we did because you can do the same thing. Yes. And it's it's just so great to be free and have options. But we'll be right back in a minute here on Fixing Money Thing. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.